Hey everybody, Vicki Fitch here, your direct sales expert and the host of Vicki Fitch Live, A Fresh Perspective. I'm very excited to tell you about my guest today. You guys, again, have probably seen the promos we've been sending out. Uh, Dinesh Agarwal, and I've been trying to practice that name to make sure I get it right, is an amazing guy that is going to totally wow you, amaze you, and make you feel a little bit insecure about maybe your accomplishments in life. Because I have to tell you, after reading his resume, I'm pretty sure I kind of, I want to kind of duck down. I'm truly amazed at all he's accomplished and all he has to offer the marketplace. And I'm really honored that he has agreed to be my guest. So I'm going to bring him on and I'm going to read a little bit about his bio so you guys can all catch up with all the ad adulation that I got going on from Mr. Dinesh. So Dinesh, join us right now. I'm so excited that you're here. Did I get Thank your name? You. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words. Your check is in the mail. <laughs> well, I thank you for that. I very much so do. But I did get the name right, correct? Yes, yes, I right. did. Absolutely right. I'm feeling very happy about that. And, uh, you know, because it, it's tricky. Names can be tricky, right? Mine's fairly yeah. simple. You know, unfortunately, my last name rhymes with a lot of stuff that uh, people can pronounce very easily. And my first name rhymes with a few things as well. So mine's easy, but yours can be a little bit tricky. So thank right. you so much for being here. Yeah. During school, I used to be the guy, like when the teachers were doing the roll call, they'd be like, and this is Rob, this is Sam, and, uh, and I was like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Any name they can't pronounce, it's got to be mine, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> is that why you came up with your Twitter handle as Din Wall? You just took the first three letters, the last three letters, and smushed them together? Well, actually, um, I wanted to, when I was a kid, I started um, searching for names, and usually everything was taken. So in <laughs> India, there are so many Dineshes out there. So gotcha. Thought everything was taken. So I came up with something unique because I wanted to have like all the email addresses from every email service provider. And I was a kid, you know, what did I know? So I thought, okay, Dinwal is never taken. So that's going to be my username for everything. Okay. Well, hey, that's smart, especially in a social media space, as we know that trying to keep your, your username across the most, most platforms, if not all, is something that's really important. I have what I call the curse of the underscore because I had to put that in there. So some I have without it because I wanted to get rid of it. Now I actually secured my Twitter handle without the underscore, but I have so many other things with the underscore. I'm I'm in the middle of a conundrum, which I'm trying to work on, but let me introduce you properly. I'm going to share this. I'm going to read this because I don't want to get this wrong, right? Dinesh is a research scientist turned serial entrepreneur. After finishing his PhD in computer science, just, you know, just saying, from Georgia State University, he moved to the field of entrepreneurship. He has created a number of tech-based startups so far and has customers in over a hundred countries using his products. Now, if that isn't enough to get you just be in amazement, wait until I share some of these other things with you because I have to tell you, as I'm reading it, my mouth was dropping open saying, are you kidding me? And I'm seeing really quick, I see Matthew, uh, Vic is in the house, Bruce Himmelblau, Mia is in the house. Guys, do me a big favor, hit that share button and share this out. We want to make sure other people find out not only about Dinesh, but find out you know about the products and services he provides because again, they're some of the greatest tools to allow you with your social media presence to really expand on it and start delivering value to your marketplace for you know, honestly, I don't think he charges enough, but hey, let's just go. We're just going to go with that because he has a really soft heart for making sure that entrepreneurs have access to amazing tools. So now that I've done a little, uh, you know, a little prep work there, um, you know, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, you know, something that you want to just kind of throw out there for us. Um, basically, I'm a guy who is never satisfied with things. So I tried a bunch of things. I quit my um, studies halfway twice um, because I didn't like the school or I didn't like the way they were teaching and I moved to a different school. So I wasted a bunch of years there. But finally, I thought that probably PhD will help me. So I um, applied for PhD and I, I loved it. It changed my perspective. And after PhD, usually um, people move to a larger company like Microsoft or Google, or um, they become a professor they usually go to academia or research, but um, some uh, somehow entrepreneurship bug got me. So I thought of this idea that hmm, why not do something where we can help? Like I can help with my expertise in tech, people who are looking for a co-founder, a technical co-founder. And with that idea, I um, moved out of US and went to India, went back to India 
and started a company where we now work with entrepreneurs who have ideas but not tech knowledge. So we kind of come in as the tech partners and we create the products in partnership with them. So that's what we started. And uh, as we built things, we realized um, we needed this or that and sort of like a snowball effect, we created a bunch of more startups to promote our previous startups. And life has been good. So I, I love what I do. So I don't feel like I work at all. Well, that is exactly what every entrepreneur wants. They want a job that feels like that they're playing, right? When you love what you do, it always feels like you're playing. It never feels like, you know, the, those people that say, oh, it's Monday. You know, it's kind of sad, right? I mean, I'm not saying we don't have days. Entrepreneurs, we have days thinking, oh, somebody, you know, Calgon, take me away. But in general, you know, we get up in the morning excited about the day because we have an opportunity to, you know, create what we want. And that's one of the things that, you know, you bring to the table in a, in a huge way, which we'll talk about in just a second. But, um, you know, I want to, I want to kind of sidetrack just for a second really quick, because we're, we talk about community. You and I actually met um, through a friend of mine who these guys know, because I've interviewed her before, Miss Jen Laner. She is a rock star. If you guys don't know Jen Laner, you should totally be following jenlaner.com. Um, but she, we met through her because we were, you know, I was looking for some other alternatives, which we'll talk about in a second. But you know, we met through community. And so um, I would love for you guys to consider being part of my community, which is the Entrepreneurial Rockstars, where we have a rock star of the week. So what we decided to move it until January, and that's why we have a whole stack, we have a, a, the entrepreneurs stacked up for the Wednesday night broadcast. You guys go to vickifitch.com forward slash freebies. You can click on the link to join the Entrepreneurial rock stars and we would love to have you as one of the rock stars of the week where you get a cameo appearance here on the show you get your name and information put in the show notes which also goes on to youtube and twitter um, we send it out everywhere and it's on vickyfitch.com so you get some exposure and we'll help you to build a business and a brand uh, while you're trying to build your social media presence so i hope you guys will again go to vickyfitch.com forward slash freebies and that way we'll have you i know lauren i think is our guest uh in january so we'll start there and again you guys have plenty of time to get your information in all right. So, you know, I kind of like one of the things that I notice when I go to your Facebook page and a couple of things in there is that you actually personally met Steve Wozniak. So I would love for you to tell us where did you meet him and how did that, how did that, you know, kind of start out? Um, so when I was a PhD student, um, the website for our school, it was not that good. So I proposed that I build this website. Um, I redesigned it. So I redesigned the whole thing and they actually liked it. So they liked it so much that um, I started, uh, I became the web developer for the ACM chapter, student chapter of the ACM. It's a, it's a large um, kind of institution. So I become the, became the officer of the chapter there. And uh, Steve Wozniak was coming to talk at our school and they asked the computer science department to send seven students to meet him. So ACM chapter, got nominated we were the seven who were going to meet him so i went there and i met him he is amazing like he is amazing he was talking to us like as if we were like like this you know and it was so good his best advice and i would love to share it with everyone sure. his best advice was not technical his best advice was in life be likable Mm, that is, that's good. And, and Nikki, that's a tweetable. So put that down. Steve Wozniak says in life, be likable. Is that correct, Dinesh? Yes. Yes. Oh, I love that. I and remember that. Yeah, that was so, that, that changed so much about me. Okay. So tell, well, I'm going to dive there then. What did it change about you and why? Was it because of his, you know, his notoriety or because he treated you like this? Um, so I think what he said, like he was, he was joking with us and like there were some inappropriate jokes, like, um, <laughs> you know, they were not censored and uh -huh. we were meeting for the first time and you do not expect someone who is like an idol for so many people right. to um, tell you, you like, like jokes with sexual innuendos, right? Right, right. He was doing that and I was like, this guy's down to it. <laughs> amazing. And uh, you know, personality um kind of evoked the feeling that i was like this guy uh -huh. first time meeting him so i thought that probably um that's what it is about you have to be yourself and mm -hmm. then you have to genuinely like people you cannot judge them you cannot think of yourself as you are some way higher than them 
right. and, and people will like you. So right. basically that kind of helped me um, learn from him that you do not have to be judgmental about people and you just treat them as if they are other human beings just like you are. I love that because I totally believe that. I think that when, you know, in this community and day and age, and that's what we talk about with social media, which is a great tie into what's going on with you. When social media is about being social, you know, it's about us connecting with other people. It's about authentic relationships, not uh, fake ones, right? Not ones where people are just, you know, pretending they, they're, they're your best friend and then they stab you in the back five minutes later, right? It's about, you know, connecting. Like you said, when you and I first met, we, we, we had, a you know, I wanted to talk to you about the, the program and different stuff we talked for over well over an hour i mean it was like we were like best buddies <laughs> i know right yeah and we didn't know that it was that late you know it was probably um i think 10 or 11 in the evening for me and i did not feel like it we was just going on and on and on well that is a huge compliment for sure and i'm sure you guys can relate to that is that um you know, whenever you can find somebody that you connect with and that you have some things in common, I mean, we've got to kind of work a little bit on, you know, that project of me sharing some things, you know, and asking for things. And, and again, you guys are so responsive, which we're going to tell them about a little bit, but you guys are so incredibly responsive. It's, it's fantastic. And I, I really appreciate that. And really quick, I realized I forgot. I was so excited about Dinesh. I forgot to say hello to our podcast viewers. For those of you who are listening here on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, wherever you've downloaded the podcast, thank you so much. And I encourage you to go to YouTube or VickiFitch.com or Facebook.com slash VickiFitch1 to watch this broadcast. It's episode 25 with Dinesh Agrawal. Agrawal. <laughs> I knew I was going to mess it up. I was close. Agrawal, right? Agrawal. Yeah. If I had a dollar every time someone messed up my name. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I was at least some of them I got right. You know, I mean, at least I can laugh at myself, right? It's like, it's not like I said it wrong every time and didn't know. I know that I keep going. Right. No, you, you, you were actually doing it fine. But I think you're so conscious, you mess it up because of that. <laughs> I know. It's like, I got to get it right. I got to get it right. You know, and so, uh, you know, hey, I can laugh at myself. I could, you know, because it's, it's true that, you know, people's names can be tricky, but right. you are so easygoing that it's not going to, you know, you're not going to snub me next time you see me. You got your name wrong, right? It's like, mm -mm, okay, girl, you're out. <laughs> no, even if you try, I don't think you're going to annoy anyone. <laughs> oh, thank you. That is super kind of you to say. I so appreciate that because, you know, it's just fun. Like, well, you know, everybody likes to hear some nice stuff once in a while. And that was super sweet of you. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for being like that. You're, you are welcome. So, okay. So we, you know, we talked about this and I have to kind of share with these people <laughs> about your background. And by the way, I see Mr. Wagner uh, is in the house. Wagner, it's so good to see you. Stacy Lynn is here. Melanie's in the house and guys do me a favor and share this broadcast out. Mia is still here. Um, again, this guy is fantastic. And Stacy's saying, if I'd be rich, I've had a dollar for everyone messes up my name too. And my name's <laughs> Harp, Stacy, Lynn, Harp, people mess up. I mean, <laughs> that seems um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I, I, that's surprised, uh, surprising. Yeah. Name, like, knock it off. Go ahead. What'd you say? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Wagner, you know, um, I don't know if you've ever seen my podcast, He Said, Red Said, where red is always right, uh, Wagner, um, but I have a thing called the Fitch Slap, right? When someone, and I always say the Fitch Slap is a public service. It only comes out when necessary. It's always right. in love. It's to adjust the course of thinking of someone who's gone astray, you know, like someone right. who were to say women should be barefoot and pregnant, for instance, would get a Fitch Slap because... <laughs> Their mental, uh, you know, they've they've gone astray, and so he says there's an, uh, and now I'm now I'm hypersensitive to it, agrawal slap. And he's trying to take the bitch slap away and give it to you. That's what he's trying to do, and it's not working. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> They're funny. He's a funny guy over there. So bald is not best, and knock it off there, you guys. You get called <laughs> Tracy Hart all the time. Okay, I don't understand that, Stacy, but we'll go ahead and go with it. We're gonna dive back in though and talk about your background. Okay, when I was reading this five page resume I got to pull up off of you, I was like looking at this, you guys are not gonna believe this. First of all, all the things that you've been into, I mean, you're amazing. You're the Molecular Basis of Disease Fellowship, the Intel Academic Community Microgrant, the Brown Belt Software Developer on Intel Software Network, 
also the winner of the IBM Master the Mainframe Contest, the Microsoft Imagine Cup finalist. Like, I'm looking at this going, oh my gosh, I'm like interviewing the president of the United States right here. And not to mention you were in theater as well as president of the Squash Club. And that is just a few things that you show how well-rounded you are. So talk to us about, the, about uh, you know, we're going to start off with the Imagine Cup finalist. What was that like? Um, so that was actually crazy. And um, Tara Walker, if you are listening to this, thank you. Because that was the last day of the submissions. And I was talking to her. She came for a talk at our institute. And she was like, oh, my God, this is what you're working on. You should apply for Microsoft Imagine Cup. It's a prestigious competition for students and students from all over America apply. And I think you have a good chance with what you're working on. So I applied quickly. She helped me apply. And uh, there you are. Uh, I, I was selected. And then they asked me to come and present. I presented. And across, I think there were 117,000 um, people who applied. And I was in the top 10. Nice. Um, so that, that felt very good. Yeah, it should feel good. And again, I mean, you've got so much. And then you you won at the IBM Master the Main Master Mainframe Contest, right? So tell me about that. And what were what was it that you were building? What were you doing? Because again, for those techie people out here, like I know, I don't know if Adam is in the house, but Adam loves, you know, Adam's a big tech guy, and of course Rob's a big tech tech guy as well. But you know, tell us about that. What was that like? Well, that was actually easy. Um, easy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, um, IBM hosts this competition, they call it Master the Mainframe, and they let you connect with their mainframe, and then they ask you to perform some um, code on it. Okay. The coding was easy to me. It, it has always been easy for me. So I was able to code whatever they wanted really quickly. So um, I actually won that competition. <laughs> He's like, and that was, I was kind of half sleeping and I was like, oh, sure. Yeah, okay, here we go. I mean, <laughs> it, it just shows how stellar you are. When did you know that you were into computers? Like, did you start off like as a really small child and kind of diddling with stuff or what, what happened? I think when computers, computers became mainstream, in, well, not mainstream, but when they were introduced to schools in India, I knew I was going to do something with computers because I loved it. Gotcha. Like, uh, from my first day onwards, I was always exploring and uh, you know doing stuff like um, looking at what other people were doing on computer and, and trying to do like some extra stuff. And uh, that's when I knew that I was going to do that. So I started, I would say, in 1996. Okay. So it's been not that long, but maybe 20 years. Yeah, um, just 20 years, you know. Just but, I, I started early and uh, it has been my passion. I started my first company in 2000 and when I was a sophomore in school and uh, we built some software for businesses in our town. And then like, it, it was always fun, like talking to people, so, uh, solving their issues, creating something that made their lives easy. It actually became my passion. And I think that's why even after PhD, I came back to the entrepreneurial um, scene. Absolutely. And well, and, you know, as we're looking at those things, you have a PhD, you have an MS, you have a, a BA. I mean, you, you just, you're like, you're, you're full of degrees because your education, you know, you continue to learn and to grow and, right. and, and just expand your knowledge. You know, we always talk about trying for people to become an expert in their field, you know, to, to continue mastering whatever it is they're in is that you're, you know, when you're an expert, you continue to learn. You don't, you don't stop because then you're no longer an expert that there's more technology, more information that's surpassing you. And so you've stayed in the game and you continue to, to build things and create things that are, you know, some pretty phenomenal things there, you know, we're, which we're going to talk about in a minute, but you have, uh, you've mastered some really, really cool stuff and they, it has, it, you've turned it into services for entrepreneurs so they don't have to struggle in this social media and this tech space because which a lot of them are still floundering around but the tools that you give us provide so much you know it becomes so much easier and the fact that which you know is our segue in a minute for us to talk about your um you know your one of your companies because you really have you know you have multiple companies you're I, I call you a serial entrepreneur like myself is that you don't you can't just I think you'd get bored if you just had one you'd be like okay what's next <laughs> right, 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 that is true 
<laughs> so, um, you know, tell us a little bit about those other two things really quick. The molecular basis of disease. What was that about? Like this is a, was it a grant that you got or this was a, a you know, something you applied for to be part of and, and it seems a little bit different than the other places you're going. So I'm just trying to figure out what kind of makes you tick. That's really where we're at. <laughs> um, so that was a fellowship. So every PhD student um, at Georgia State University gets a fellowship and I was chosen for MBD. So basically the idea was that the biotechnology group could use little help from um, tech guys. Okay. So we, were, we would understand a little bit of biotechnology. Okay. And we will see where we can use what we are working on to help them do their research faster. So to work on that, um, I was given that fellowship and I helped them with whatever I was doing. Okay. So again, you're just well versed. I mean, and tell us, so how uh, you were in theater groups and I think you were also a DJ, if I remember something on <laughs> something, okay. or, or you were, okay. or, yeah, you were a radio. That's right. You were a ra it wasn't a DJ, you were a radio jockey. So right. tell us about those two things. Again, they just, you just keep going. You're like the guy that just keeps going and going. Yeah, I think I had more potential. I just didn't tap it. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just, <laughs> I don't know how much more you could have, but hey, whatever. <laughs> I'm modest. Um, so, well, yes, theater was my passion. Um, I started acting when I was, I think, 10 or 11 years old. And I, I was really good at it. Or, well, actually, I think I was better than others because I won a lot of prizes for my acting and uh, but acting is, is a struggling field. So I did not. So my parents did not allow me to go there because there are so many people who are struggling to become, um, you know, to get a good gig. Mm -hmm. And uh, radio was something because I was in theater. So I was in the um, arts and I was really good at um, talking to people. Okay. So I thought I will give it a try. So I tried it in one semester and then they offered it to me again another semester. So that, that was fun too. It's just nothing you can't master. That's what it is. It's that, you know, that you just, when you t try something, you have the ability to master it for sure. And, and I'm sure your parents probably saw how technically advanced you were and probably wanted to encourage you in an area, not that, that your acting skills wouldn't have been stellar, but, you know, utilizing that, you know, the opportunity to really create things that were, you know, benefiting the world. I, I, I'm guessing as a parent, that's kind of where they were going. Do you think that might've been their approach or they just, you know, they said no to they didn't like actors they didn't want Bollywood what, anywhere near because, them. <laughs> yeah that's that's what I think because they were never against anything I wanted to do uh -huh. like you know no one in my family has ever been to U.S. for studies or something but mm -hmm. when I told them they were like yeah if that's what you want to do go ahead so mm -hmm. they have been very supportive that's fantastic well we're um so tell us about the squash club and then I'm gonna do a little promo and we're gonna dive into um you know the talk about India and the, and the pro start me thing so um tell us about that the the president of the squash club so you had to get some athletics in and you just so what made you uh, gravitate towards squash right so um hey Dr. Sundaraman if you're there thank you for introducing me to squash so he <laughs> was uh, the dean of graduate studies and uh, we were really good like my office was next to his so we would um, greet each other on our way in or out so he told me about squash i used to play racquetball but then he was like why don't you try squash so i went with him he taught me how to play and then we started playing regularly and then we had this um, squash club at georgia state but no one was actually taking an initiative to um, start it again it, it has been closed for like years so I thought, okay, I'll, I'll do something. So I became the president and I opened the chapter. I enrolled some of the students and I kind of um, helped squash get noticed as a sport that is actively played at your district. I love it. Okay, so first of all, it wasn't even really active. So, and I love the way you say squash, just so you know. <laughs> It's very cute. My parents were from the East Coast, and so they they uh, enunciate things a little bit differently. And so every time I'm hearing you say that, I'm thinking of my parents. So there you go. Spoosh, spoosh. <laughs> so I'm making a uh, jest because I adore you. And I know that you know that I'm not making fun. I am jesting I because I think you're amazing. And, and again, you take a sport that people aren't even playing and you say, yeah, I'll become the president. I will recruit people. And we'll get the sport going again. So pretty much anything you set your mind to is going to happen. I'm pretty sure that's right. right. 
Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, and, and we got some great people here. You know, Wagner is very active over here. Uh, uh, Joey is in the house. Joey Giggles. Joseph Aquino is in the house. Uh, Aquilino. See, I said his name wrong too. So at least you're not alone. You're in good company. <laughs> But I appreciate that Matthew squash is food and yet it's a sport just so you know it's <laughs> it's a sport and uh, I wanted to again those of you guys who are watching this or listening to the podcast uh, no matter where you download it we appreciate you please watch episode 25 with Dinesh Agrawal on uh, vickypitch.com on YouTube or here on Facebook at Vicky Pitch One. We really do appreciate you guys being here. Uh, we appreciate the information and uh, we'll try and keep and stay engaged with you, but you have to come and see him. You've got to check out how adorable he is and when he says squash, wow. <laughs> the, the look on his face when he says squash. Um, you know, he again, he's a master in what's gone on and I really do appreciate you being here. We're going to do a quick little segment for one of our sponsors. Um, Archon Mounts is an amazing company that does all of my gear, everything that I use to live stream. And they do have, remember you guys, I know it's too late for you to get it for Christmas, but you could print out, put it, wrap that up in a box and send it out, you know, and give it to somebody and it's 20% off when you use the code. Slap, uh, at archon.com a-r-k-o-n.com i use the tw broadcaster every day to dual stream i also use that little mount right there i carry it in my purse all the time and uh so i appreciate each and every one of you again go to archon.com use the code pitch slap and get 20 percent off your order so okay you know dinesh let's let's talk about this graduation and why you went back to india now i was privy to this conversation because you and i had it when we originally chatted and i thought it was pretty interesting that you know you were here in the states you graduated with your phd and you decided to go back to india why share that story with everyone um so when i was towards when it was toward the end almost the end of my phd a student from our university he emailed me and he's like hey um dinesh i have an idea that I'm working on, but um, I need some help with, from a tech guy. So can I come and talk to you? And he came and he talked about his idea. I liked his idea and I thought, okay, I'll help you build it. So I helped him build that idea. We launched it. We worked on that idea for um, some time. Um, that idea eventually did not work out, but I loved every moment of helping him building his idea. And I, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So I came up with this new business model and then I, Atlanta is a big city. There are a lot of entrepreneurs there. So I started going to these um, entrepreneur student mixer events. And there everyone, almost everyone had this issue. They had a great idea, but they did not know how to execute it, how to launch it, how to um, convert it into a product that they can market. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, um, what if I started a company where I have a team of great engineers, designers, and whatever it takes to take an idea and convert it into a product that can be marketed. And then I started asking people, hey, I'm planning to do this. Do you like it? And everyone was like, shut up and take my money. Yeah. <laughs> That's another quotable, right? A tweetable, shut up and take my money. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so. So I knew, I knew there that I, I was on to something, but it was not possible to do it in US because hiring people to help me would have been prohibitively expensive. So I moved back to India, um, started interviewing people. I have interviewed over 500 people so far. And of those 500, um, I only like maybe like, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. My mom, she's always curious. Oh, tell her we said hi. She can pop her face yeah. in. We're we're very uh, we're a very communicative environment here. Right. So usually when I'm in my meetings, I'm with my friends um, from US, and they all know my mom. So she pops in and say hi, hello, and then she leaves. So. We're okay. We are so okay with mom being here. Just so you know, tell mom don't feel embarrassed. Come on over, Vicky Fitch Live. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Um, no, so, okay. <laughs> that was funny. I know we got them all discombobulated. So we'll get back into your stories that you were talking about, you know, getting, getting this whole team of people together in the U S is right. more challenging. So, yeah. So in, in U S it would have been very expensive and I, um, uh, and people I wanted to serve, they did not have a lot of money. They were all bootstrap entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So I came up with this idea that I moved back to India because, um, it is cheaper to build things mm -hmm. here. And right. you can get the talent. Talent is, is in abundance here as well. So mm -hmm. I found the best people possible and they were charging me way less than what it would charge me in US. 
Sure. So we came up with this idea that I will charge you whatever it costs me to build it. So basic, basically, it's cost price, whatever it costs me to run the office and to um, pay the guys that work with me. Mm -hmm. And we will take equity in your idea. Right. And that model actually got popular. So people started working with us. Yeah. And from there on, um, we started building projects. We have built a number of startups so far. And uh, that's about it. So, you know, in that, because that this is called Pro Start Me, right? That's the name of this business, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, you know, can are you taking new ideas and new clients or, or, you know, participation in those things now? Or are you guys maxed out and you're like, this, we're not going any farther right now? Um, we are always looking for great ideas. The thing is, um, we're looking for ideas that can become the Facebook or Google of tomorrow. Right. So, so, so big thinkers, you know, people yeah. that are thinking on a broad scale, international scale, that kind of stuff. That's what you're looking for. Right. Right. And so, um, you know, for people that you, you have gone that, you know, like you started this company because you loved helping people and you watched these bootstrap entrepreneurs that had these great ideas. I mean, let's face it, you met Steve Wozniak and, you know, you know how he and Steve Jobs started. And so, you know, they were bootstrapping with selling. I think, do I remember that one of them sold a VW and the other one sold like some possessions to get the $1,600 to actually, you know, start right. Doing the, the, I think it was a, was it a circuit board? I, I don't remember all this, the statistics, but you know, they were bootstrapping, but they were brilliant, brilliant people often have to bootstrap as well. So it doesn't, that's, and I, I do a, a, a scope that's called broke, not broken, right? There's a lot of people in the world that are broke. That doesn't mean they're broken. They can be brilliant people and have not achieved success yet or not, have not gotten there. That doesn't mean they are not fantastic people. And so when I heard your story of wanting to help people that were starting up, I was really excited because it just shows, you know, where you were going with it and what you were wanting to do is that you believe in people, you, you know, you vet the idea and decide whether or not it's worth something, but that you believe in people and are willing to basically put your money where your mouth is and say, okay, we'll, we'll cover this. And uh, we want a piece of the equity. So yeah. it's brilliant, you know, a brilliant way to do business. Thank you. And that is quotable too. Um, you're broke, but not broken. Broke, not broken. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because don't you agree? People can hit setbacks or maybe just haven't reached that, that state of achievement yet, but they're still quality people. I mean, they're just, you know, dynamic people in the world. Yes, definitely. And see, if you were broke, I would still love you, Dinesh, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not, but yeah. That's what I always tell people, you know, don't judge people by their bank accounts. Don't judge them. You know, just talk to them, find out, you know, find out who they are and, and what they've got inside, because there's a lot of brilliance inside of a lot of people. Definitely, definitely. So, you know, um, you know, what, what's been your favorite now? I know there's been a couple, whoops, I don't, did I just freeze? Hopefully not. But, um, I know there's been a couple, uh, things that, that you've done, I think, um, followed and, um, uh, tweetful were those your ideas or were those part of the projects that you were doing with other people and can you share stuff about any of those um, you know projects like your favorite one that kind of stuff right so um, we have done a few things so the major problem that we noticed with our startups that we were building was marketing so we were able to build something right but we are like code monkeys we do not know code how to monkeys. I love it <laughs> So we don't know how to promote it, but then I had to learn. And then as we learned how to promote something, we figured that um, we can use the technology to help us do that. So okay. we built tools like Tweetful, Fan Harvest, um, Followed, and Recurpost. Post. So these are all the things that we built internally for our own use so mm -hmm. that we can help the startups that we build promote. But then um, we got the feedback from our own startups that, you know what, these tools that you use internally, they're so powerful. You should actually put a payment wall around them and put it out there. So people would love to use these tools. So we put them out there, um, modestly priced, and uh, people people like love them. So we were doing fine. My favorite, though, is a project that we worked on, it's called Zoned In. Okay. Uh, so it's really hard to pick one favorite when it's like asking a parent, 
which one of your children is your favorite <laughs> right right so i i can't really pick one but i i think i mean, zoned in is the most promising zoned in um you could you guys could go to zonedinapp.com z o n e d i n a p p.com if you want to check it out but it's the idea of learning skateboarding um from scratch and Rob, just so you know, I'm, I keep freezing and <laughs> I turn black and white. Yeah, I do. Everybody's saying it and I can see myself. I keep turning black and white and freezing <laughs> just so I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> it's happened like 12 times. And so I'm kind of feeling like I'm going through like a, a Ricky and Lucy episode where I'm going down the flashing back. <laughs> <laughs> but just to keep an eye and see what's going on. But yeah. Yeah, it is that you got. They're seeing it. And they keep marking it in the chat. They're saying, "Yeah, you're turning black and white." You yeah, I'm, I'm seeing it too. I'm seeing sees it too. <laughs> Watch. Well, maybe it's going to be gone now because it's like the mechanic that is watching. You know, for those of you guys who don't know, I have Sam Gonzalez and uh, Mr. Rob Hicks back here doing the producing the show. It's kind of like the, um, you know, I was going to say Charlie of Charlie's Angels because it's kind of cooler than than uh, the wizard behind the curtain. <laughs> But uh, if you guys don't know Rob and Sam, they are stellar. And those of you guys who are listening to this podcast, you definitely have got to watch this episode because seriously, I go black and white and freeze up. I'm going to next time I start to freeze, I'm going to do a mannequin pose and see if I can hold it. But definitely watch episode 25 with Dinesh agarwal uh we're talking about a lot of great tech stuff a fabulous set of information and again a remarkable man that has not only geared his interest towards helping entrepreneurs but has built his own business and brand and uh, on technology base you know along with his phds he's allowed this expansion to grab other entrepreneurs and other tech people that are in that space so they can continue to build uh and and make things even better so and he's looking for the next big idea your next big google your next big idea so think about that and definitely connect with him uh, if you do his information will be in the show notes and uh, again you'll be able to to connect with him in, in a multitude of ways but if you have an idea that's stellar don't don't tell him about your you know a hot dog cooker those are already around <laughs> <laughs> find something good but okay so Dinesh let's get back to you and so you don't have a favorite um child you know you told us you don't have a favorite child but can I mean are these apps that people can still purchase I, I know you can recur post because that's our next topic we're going to talk about in a minute but these other ones like follow tweetful um I think you said something about harvest I, that one I didn't know about what was fan, that one fan harvest what is it fanharvest.com this okay. is for Instagram so if oh. you want to um, promote your Instagram account. Okay. I'm going to have to get some private lessons from Dinesh. So like be on the lookout, you guys, because I might be uh, all of a sudden promoting a whole new line of products because I'm going to even <laughs> more just by, you know, by following directions by somebody who has definitely done great in the marketplace. So we'll check those out. And then the zoned in one, that's how to ride a scooter. Is that what you said? Or skateboard. Um, skateboard. Skateboard. Okay. So, um, cause you know, my son's a scooterer. So if you could get on, get on that, then, you know, we're in just so you know, <laughs> sure, definitely, definitely. definitely watching YouTube videos about how to flip better, how to do this, how to do that. I mean, like, I can't even pronounce some of the things that he's trying to do, but, uh, get on right. that. Nash. I'm going to tell him, okay, no, okay. <laughs> we'll do. <laughs> you guys heard it. You heard it here. Dinesh is on it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Okay, so let's talk about Recur Post. You know, I, I want to talk just for a minute about it. Then we're going to do a quick video about it so people can kind of catch that vibe. So this is a really good time for you guys to share this broadcast out again because we're about to, we're going to give you a two-minute video clip on, on how, what Recur Post does. But I'm telling you, I personally use it every day. I have all my big clients using it as well and building our VA team so they're all familiar with how to use it because it's such an effective tool. And again, Dinesh puts it on for such uh, you know, such a, a, a minimal price for, for certainly to start. And he, what he provides is better than what's out there for, you know, five times what he's charging. So again, tell us a little bit about Recur Post and then we're going to watch a video. Um, so Recur Post, again, was something that we wanted to build for ourselves because we liked the idea of evergreen scheduling that your best posts keep on um, going out on your social accounts. But the alternatives that were out there, the other products that were doing something similar, 
they were so expensive. If you're starting out, you can't afford to go for them. And uh, I have been there, so I know how hard it is on entrepreneurs. So I wanted to build something that will give them a free tool, a totally free tool when they are starting out. So mm -hmm. our uh, motto has always been that give it to them for free so that they can grow their business. And as they grow, they will start paying you because they will need more features. Right. So we want to grow with you. That way our relationship will be a, a long one. And that's what we, we seek. Well, and it's absolutely true. You, what recur posts for those of you in the social media space, um, you know, there is a, an amazing, you know, option to, to continue. People don't tend to get their content out there and to keep it out there. The fact is, is that content, you know, you post something on Twitter and, you know, the life expectancy of a tweet is like 40 seconds. So you're obviously all of your followers are not seeing that content, but you're not going to post it 30 times in a day either. But with recur post, it's creating, a, you know, a, a, what do you call it? An actual yeah. library right so it's a library that will continue to post out of that library if you had 365 posts it would literally post one a day or one an hour or however you set it up and when the when you were done it would start over again and if you added new content in it would blend that content in as well is that correct yes that I mean, you should be my marketing person. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about that. <laughs> there is a, so when we, we consider the amount of time we put into content, into blog posts, into the, the research that we do on things, we want to make sure it gets maximum reach. So being able to recycle that and pull it through, even my, you know, the YouTube, inter these, these interviews, we keep those scheduled in recur posts. So they go out and that, so the people that missed it the first time around can catch it later and continue to build each of your social media platforms because most of you that know me, I'm a, a big advocate of social media and I believe that you need to have a presence on all major platforms. You want to focus on one, but you want to have a presence there and recur post makes it extremely simple. You know, whatever content you have will continue and you just keep adding new content in. So like for instance, these great knowledge bombs that Dinesh is dropping will show up in recur post. They'll be posted on Twitter. They'll be posted on Instagram. They'll be posted on um, Pinterest. They'll be posted through out all of my social media platforms and it will continue to gain some relevance in the marketplace and and you know have people retweet it and share it and, and that kind of stuff and again that's all due to the abilities that we have through recur posts so um you know do you want to say something before we pop that little two minute video in um well i would say go to use it <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And we're going to give you that link or you guys, in case you are antsy, you can go to vickyfitch.com slash recur post, R-E-C-U-R-P-O-S-T. But let's watch this video real quick. It's only two minutes. Recur post allows you to increase social life of your best updates by sharing them in a recurring manner. You start by connecting recur post to your various social accounts like LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Next, you add libraries to categorize your social updates into categories like your blogs, other people's content, funny quotes, or your promotions. You can add any number of libraries to be as specific as you wish. We have made it intuitive to add social updates to your libraries. You can add an image or just text. You can also simply paste a link and we will populate the preview for you automatically. Want to add updates in bulk from a file? We've got you covered there too. You have total control over your social updates. You can edit or delete them whenever you want. Finally, you can set the schedule per your choice to tell Recur Post when to post, where to post, and how frequently to post. Our advanced scheduler lets you schedule updates to go live daily, weekly, or even monthly. Recur Post can even find the best time to post an update for you. Our calendar view allows you to visually see your schedule for each social account so that Recur Post always posts right content at right time. You can review what is going on live on editorial calendar and make any last minute changes for scheduled updates. Our advanced reporting tells you what is working and what is not so that you can keep only the best of the best updates in your library. Once an update has been published, it will return to the end of the library to be posted again once everything else has been posted from that library. So the more updates you add to a library, less often an update repeats. By the time an update is scheduled again, it is ready to reach a totally new set of your audience. There is a lot more to recur posts than what you see here. Sign up today with our forever free plan and see how recur post grows your business day after day. 
So that, like I said, that's a, just a little clip, you guys, to explain the benefits of Recur Post. But seriously, I've been using it again. And whenever I have a suggestion or something that I would like love to modify, you know, and I'm not telling all you guys to try and message Dinesh. I'm just saying they're very responsive. Their goal is to make this the premier tool out in the marketplace. I think that's your goal for all of your software, right? Is that anytime yeah. you've got something that you just want to make it top notch. Yes, yes, definitely. And that's that's what we strive for. Well, you I honestly you've done a stellar job. And like I said, anytime, thank you, Joey, for sharing. By the way, you guys make sure that you share this broadcast out. This is good information. As entrepreneurs that are trying to build businesses, this is one of the tools that's a must have, seriously. Because first of all, it's free for your first three accounts. And Dinesh, remind me, it's there's is, is it unlimited post for those three accounts or is there yes. a certain amount? Um, there are 100 recurring updates that you can have, but you can have unlimited one-time updates. Okay. So, and that's for free, you guys. Just so you know, the, the things that compare to this, uh, <laughs> just, you, you know, the, the price point is so much higher. And, you know, it's like, it's $79 now, I think. The one that competes this is $79. His is zero or 79, you go ahead and pick, it's okay. But really, if you want to pay the 79, send it to me and I'll schedule the recur post for you. Just, <laughs> just so we're really clear, send the money to me. I'll make sure the data still gets out the way you want, but I'll collect the money instead. How's that sound? <laughs> so Dinesh, what, what is your favorite part about recur post? Like when you think about it as an entrepreneur and what it does for you, what's your favorite part? Um, so, what it allows me to do is I can spend 10 minutes every morning and uh, go through my content mm -hmm. and I can go through the content that I get through feeds, like either it is Google alerts or it's through a website that I follow. And I can go through those feeds quickly, like two or three items. So for instance, Google sends me these latest updates mm -hmm. that it indexes and I could approve those. And that way I can mix my own updates with the new updates from the industry. So I have fresh content going out as well as I have my best content and then some promotional content going out. So that way to manage my social media, it just takes me five to 10 minutes a day. Okay, and then we have a question here. Susan wants to know, is it branded as a recur post so people know it's pre-populated? Um, sorry, what does that mean? Um, I'm not I saying. think what she means is it, say, is it saying, you know, like when you send out Hootsuite, it says it's coming out from Hootsuite. It, she wants to know if it's posted as coming out from Recur Post or if it looks like it's just posted right then and not pre-scheduled. Right. So we do not add any branding to it. However, on, I think, pages, Facebook pages, Facebook, Facebook groups, I think, Facebook groups, Facebook tells your group members that this application was used to post that, but that's not from us. We do not add any branding on our end. So there your, there's your answer, Susan, is that um, it's, it's not branded by them, but on certain pieces that uh, Facebook does, I don't know if, I don't remember if it's in the group or not, because I've seen it a few times, but it's not on everything I post and mm -hmm. everything, um, you know, everything that is about the podcast, the, this, we have a strict podcast scheduling. You guys probably saw how many posts go out for each of my podcasts. And uh, I don't think those are actually safe from recur post and they're all scheduled in the inside there, every single one of them, just so you guys know. Yeah, it is great. Isn't it, Joey? Thank you. Um, and so, you know, there are different platforms of that. And now there is a, there are a couple platforms that you're not able to do yet. Correct. Dinesh, yes. tell us what those are and what the, you know, when, are, are some of those things coming or, you know, what is your solution? Do you have another software solution for ones that you are not currently doing in Recur Post? So one is Pinterest and uh, <clears throat> Pinterest will most likely come to Recur Post because we have access to their APIs and uh, Recur Post is something we want to keep kosher. So we do not do anything that violates a platform's terms of services or, or anything else. Right. And then um, there is Instagram. So we are planning to build apps for Recur Post so that we can remind you when it is time to post on Instagram. So we will probably add that functionality, although it will take some time because for that we will have to build the apps first for Recur Post. Okay. Uh, we have another solution called Fan Harvest, which allows you to schedule 100% hands-free on Instagram. 
So if you're looking for a solution like that, um, Fan Harvest is for you. It does more than scheduling, but um, you can check it out. So fanharvest.com, correct? Yes. yes. And do you want to share yeah. anything about that? You know, to uh, I'll definitely put that in the show notes. But did you want to share something about that for them so they know what's what what else is available? Um, so Fan Harvest allows you to do everything you wanted to do to growth hack Instagram. You could um, give it keywords or hashtags that if someone is using these hashtags when they are posting on Instagram, like that post or leave a comment on that post and you can actually put the comments um, and we will pick one randomly or you could follow that person. So, you know, if you have a competitor, you could follow all of their followers and because you're in the same industry, most of them will follow you back so you can copy their followers. Then you can schedule things. So you can schedule your posts um, in advance. So you could schedule for the entire month at the beginning of the month, and then you don't have to worry about scheduling your posts again. Then we allow you to send direct messages to people who follow you. So you can greet your followers with a nice message. So you could send them a coupon code, or you could send them a link to your video so that they can learn more about your offerings. So and so we do. And does that is there is that a free software that is that has a charge attached to it? Um, so we give it to you 14 days free, completely free. Okay. And after that, you can post for free, but you can't schedule for free. Okay. So the scheduling and the auto things that you're talking about. So and what is the cost for that? That way, like I said, we can start helping people understand the value of it. It starts at $15 a month. Okay. And, and $15 a month, just so you know, like in a social media platform, it's really nothing. I mean, you, you can get, you think about it. I mean, I don't know what your product or service is, but chances are whatever it is, you're going to make more than $15 if you make a sale. So one sale a month, you know, is, is pretty easy when you start utilizing social media platforms and understanding the platform. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put Dinesh on the spot here because it'll be harder for him to say no. <laughs> Dinesh, what do you think about us doing a webinar sometime in the future about teaching people about these products and services that you have and, and helping them understand how to use them? Was that something you would consider? Oh, yeah, I would love that. Why not? Oh, see, and see, he said he loved it. I don't know if he means it or not, but he said no, it. I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> hey, tell me about it. Like, if someone says that, hey, your son can really um, play this school really well or he can do tricks really well. Um, would you mind if he does it like and I record it and post it on my Facebook page? <laughs> right? I mean, don't you love him? You guys put like, give us some emojis over here on Facebook. If you love this guy, I mean, he's so amazing. And that, that was just, you know, I was joking, but not joking when I, I mean, I obviously did put you on the spot and didn't give you a lot of room to move, but I also had a feeling based on, you know, other conversations that you were really, um, you're into sharing, helping, contributing. See, there's a bunch of emojis flying through. They're saying, you know, you're a rock star. So um, I am going to get that schedule. We will talk offline. Definitely. Dinesh, I would love to get that schedule because, you know, for those of you guys who know me, you know that my heart is helping entrepreneurs build businesses, that that's, that's why I do that 20 minute consultation. That's why I help you guys build a business and a brand is because I want you to succeed. And so when I can find tools, like I said, when I, I met Dinesh and you guys, for those of you who know me, I kind of put him through the ringer a little bit. I wanted to know about the software and I had a lot of questions, right? <laughs> I, I grilled you. Okay. Here's what I'm using now. Boom, 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 boom. You know, answer all these questions. He handled them like a trooper. The ones that he wasn't able to take care of, he said, well, we're working on that. And he's kept me apprised and abreast of what's going on and, you know, has been so, he, he's so interactive. And so when I find things like that, I was like, I have to have you on the show. I want all these people that listen to the podcast. I want the people that are listening to Vicky Pitch Live and that are following me on, on all the social media platforms. I want them to know that there are tools out there that they don't have to break the bank, that they can start with some base tools. And as their business grows, they can add these things on and make incredible differences in their income that they don't, you know, reaching a social media space is critical right now. I think it's Chris Brogan that says, if you don't have a digital footprint, you're a digital nobody. And right now we need that. And so you're giving us the tools we need to, to make sure that we aren't a digital nobody. 
Right, right. That's that's what we want to do. We want everyone to have the level playing field with the big corporates because they can spend money like water and right? you don't have that. So you got a growth hack. Exactly. See, I don't you love him. Honestly, he's so amazing. Yeah. See, Rob's giving him a double <laughs> thumbs up because you, right? it's, it's true. And like I said, what you present is, is helping communities, you know, and, um, <laughs> Thank you, Wagner, for clarifying that. <laughs> you are on the podcast. You got to come watch the show and read the comments because there's there's some fun stuff going on. I'm looking the at them. I'm looking at yeah. <laughs> There's some fun stuff going on there. And we even have a troll in there, I think, too. That was always funny. Um, let's see. Vicky is using a third-party encoding software to produce the duals. Oh, yeah. So you guys are asking. Um, I think it was you. Who was it that was asking about this? Susan? Um, Rob Hicks. And, uh, and Sam Gonzalez, or who's producing this show. Facebook doesn't do this. This is actually a produced show. Um, so that's, that's being produced. And, and uh, if you guys need information on that uh, in the show notes, the information to contact Rob and Sam is in there. So uh, remember that because if you want to step up your game and you guys actually want to come into the marketplace looking like a pro, you want to connect with some professionals. Just like we're connecting with Dinesh, you want to connect with some professionals that have the ability to help you look like you're at the top of your game you know start using your expertise and start looking the part you want to make sure that people take you seriously in whatever business endeavor you're in so um you know as we go through there like i said we've 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 got a lot of information we found out why recur post was created we found out what it does and what his favorite part is my favorite part is that i can schedule out things like for all the holidays i can schedule out things to for promos for clients for customers i can schedule them all out in advance that i don't have to think and you guys know i'm a big group tasker when i created the rockstar guide to getting it done the course it's all about learning how to layer things on top of each other and group task it's not about multitasking but this is the same thing when i i take these posts and my my va nikki who's probably here because she usually tunes in you know she grabs the holiday she grabs the things and makes sure that they're all scheduled out in advance well, as soon as we book a podcast, boom, they all drop into a sequence that we have of, you know, the, the one hour, 30 minutes and live now all the way back to every other day, once a week or once a month, depending on when the, the broadcast is. So we start, you know, kind of sprinkling that information into the community in advance so people can start to schedule. People can say, oh, this is coming up. And again, we utilize Recur Post as an opportunity to build that broad, you know, build that base and have people know what's happening. So, you know, again, this tool is something that I highly recommend. Go to vickifitch.com forward slash Recur Post, R-E-C-U-R-P-O-S-T, and you'll have the link there to get right in. And, um, and we will uh, make sure that Dinesh uh, does that little webinar that we talked about that <laughs> teaches you guys some new skills about Recur Post and how to how to utilize it. And and if you guys um, join my email list, that's how I'll be able to let you know. So again, vickyfitch.com, join the Entrepreneurial Rockstars, click that link. However you sign up, we'll make sure that you uh, find out about that and find out about some other little special things that I might be able to convince Dinesh to do. Like, I'm totally throwing this out there because I don't know what I'm going to ask, but I'm just... Uh... <laughs> I'm just, I just, I like this guy. I know we can work well together. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we're coming back, you know, we have about 30 minutes before the broadcast is over. And so, you know, I want people to know how they can connect with you and what your favorite part is. Like, what is, how, what is your favorite part of your business? you got a lot of stuff going on. Now, obviously, if somebody's got the next Google or the next Apple idea, that's, that might take a little priority because, you know, you know, and don't forget me when you're a billionaire. Okay. I'm just saying, just, <laughs> don't forget your girl. Okay. <laughs> never, 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 Ricky. And that cannot happen. Um, so the favorite part of my business is basically overcoming challenges, coming up with ideas and uh, trying to solve them because we don't know what we are going to run into. Every day is a new challenge. So things are changing. And uh, sometimes we build things hoping that people would love them and they don't, and then finding out why they are not loving it and what can we do to change their behavior. So this is kind of a challenge and we love that. So when you have a challenge and you try to achieve something, it actually gives you the motivation to get ready as soon as possible, go to office and start hacking away. And, and that's the best part about my business because we are always working on new ideas. It's not routine. Um, 
I remember after school, like in India in 2007, I went and worked for corporate. In a year, I was bored to death. <laughs> they asked me to do the routine work. And I was like, seriously? I mean, I have a master's degree and I am much more capable than just using a tool. Like they had me master a tool and then use that tool for our clients. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is not fair. I did not spend like 20 years of my life. <laughs> so I was like, no, 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 this, this is not good. I did not get that intellectual satisfaction. So I applied for PhD because it actually um, helped me achieve that kind of satisfaction that I wanted. And now from my work, I get the same satisfaction because now what we do is highly satisfying intellectually. Well, and the cool part is, is that you get the whole picture. And that's what I love is that when you're building something that you're not just going from this little perspective, you see the whole thing and you, and, and again, this is what I always tell people about me as a business coach is that I understand social media. I understand business. I've built and sold companies. I understand people. I under, you know, so I understand this whole, the whole scheme. So if something falls apart, I still know how to fix it, right? I mean, it doesn't mean that's my skill set, like that's my favorite part, but I know how to fix it. And it's you, like you get to direct attention to all the people because you understand how all the parts work and how they move together. And so if somebody is, you know, you, it basically you don't allow smoke blowing, you know, people can, there's a lot of people out there selling social media services or social media expertise that know Jack Diddley about social media. Right? I mean, wouldn't you say it's embarrassing. And so when, you know, the people that don't know, they're like, Oh, well, they said they were going to, you know, I, I <laughs> look at their websites and they say they're paying somebody for their social media. And I go, you have no likes, no comments, and no shares. <laughs> what exactly right. are they doing? Even your social media person isn't liking, commenting, or sharing on your post. <laughs> That's a problem. They're not right. even having you like, comment, and share on your own business posts. <laughs> That's right. a problem. What are you paying them for? To they're paying them because they're using recur posts and aren't doing a dang thing. <laughs> So would you say that's true is that the fact that one of the, the exceptional things that you do is that you understand all the working parts and that's how you're able to delegate and assign things out and then monitor. So that's why you can juggle multiple projects at once. Right. So that's actually a very good point because a lot of time people question us. They're like, so I'm giving you equity in my idea and then I'm paying you um, for your developers. So why can't I hire developers like freelancers from India or any other country and have them build stuff for me? And I was like, you don't understand. Like right. if you hire a freelancer and if he runs into an issue, he'll be waiting the entire day so that you wake up in the morning and tell him how to go forward. Right. I, I am there with them 24 hours a day. Like as long as they're working, they are with me. They can call me up or they can come face to face. We can have brainstorm. And luckily, I have amazing, amazing guys. Pratik, uh, Hemant, Kankur, Jigar, Tejas. Hello to all of you. And you guys are amazing. You do amazing work. I'm telling you, you do amazing work. And I'm proud to um, be able to have you guys with me. So these guys are amazing. So most of the times, they'll be like, no, 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 this doesn't look right. Look, how about this? How about this? So we brainstorm. And that's the difference we bring in um, to this business. So we're not like building something because you want to build it. We want to build it because we want to make this product world's number one. Yeah, and that's that's cool because that's where it's at. When you care as much about their product and service, when you have skin in the game, like you said, you're you want a piece, you're you're the man. I mean, they can try and go for hire somebody to do what you're doing, but the, since they don't have the expertise to know if the person's doing it right, they're clueless. It just, and that's what people don't quite get. And, and like you said, when they start, and I don't mean this in any kind of mean way, but when people start questioning, they can ask me questions. There's a difference between asking me questions and questioning me. You know, right. if you ask me questions saying, I don't understand this. How does this work? Can you explain this to me? So they feel comfortable that you have the knowledge base. That's fine. When they start saying, why do I want to do this? And mm -hmm, I think to myself, I have a little system and I put a little X in the corner means I don't want to work with that person. Yeah. If people don't trust me, then we shouldn't work together. You know, if you have questions to see if we, we can have a stable relationship and if you, you get the connection, then that's, that's totally fine. I, I recommend that you do that, but 
if you then start questioning me, we're not a good fit because I don't work well like that. You know, I'm a professional. You want to talk to references? No problem. You want to see information? No problem. But if you're right. going to start questioning me or trying to make me drop my price point, not happening. It's, you no, know, I, I don't want to deal with no that. Point. Yeah. See, so we're, we got to do something together. Can you, <laughs> we should, we should, yeah, right? We always talk about it. We should do something together for sure. Right? I can totally see us blowing something up. I'm so excited. Like every time I talk to you, I get excited. <laughs> I, I can't say Thank I have the you. next Google idea, but I got some stuff up here. I got to tell you, there's a lot going on up here. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's talk. We should do something, definitely. We should. I think it would be fun. So, right. um, you know, there is, so what would you like? What, what else do you want to share with these people? I mean, you have an open platform right now to give them advice, to uh, recommend something, to tell them, you know, share whatever you want. Just take five minutes, you know, six minutes and just share whatever is on your heart. Because again, as an entrepreneur and as somebody that's gone through school and, you know, and, and been, you know, what's the word that you used earlier is like, you know, unsatisfied and had to continue pursuing things until you found what you want. What would you do to encourage people? Or what, what do you want to share with them? Right. So first thing that I have learned is if you're not happy with something, do something about it. You have to do something about it because things won't change if you don't change things. So if you're not happy, quit and start something new. Then um, I would say if, like, because I'm a techie, I have to talk about that. So if you have an idea that you want to work on, do whatever it takes. It doesn't have to be your job. You can't say that, oh, because I have a job, I can't do this, so I'm going to quit my job. Don't do that. If you really want to do it, you'll figure a way out. Maybe sleep less. Maybe do it over the weekends. Maybe you don't need that beer on Friday, and you want to go home and, and start up a WordPress website. You know, learn things. There are so many tutorials. So start something yourself and people who come to me and they go like, look, I have a brilliant idea. It will be the next Facebook and I just want you to code it. That is so wrong because they are assuming that it's the idea that is everything. So note it down. Ideas are useless. They are dime a dozen. It doesn't matter. You have an idea. Your mom has an idea. Your mom's friend has an idea. Everyone in the world has multiple ideas. So your idea is worth nothing absolutely nothing well of course if you can patent it that's a different thing but other than that it's worth nothing so do not get into that trap of i have an amazing idea share your idea with everyone no one is going to steal your idea because they have their own idea if they were good enough to work on something so share your idea get feedback from people your friends and family are always going to tell it i'm loving it this is the best idea i've ever heard do not trust them. Trust people who are going to pay you. And if they say, I love this idea, ask for money. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, that, that's the, 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 the balance. Well, what is it? The test. That's the test. You love it. Well, okay. What are you yeah. willing to invest in it? Right. And that, you know, to, because then that will, well, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that, but uh, it's good. But I, there's two things I'm going to say that I'm going to kind of I'm going to round the edge of one of the things that you said, Dinesh, is that when you, when you don't love what you do, you know, there's an opportunity, you know, for, I, I don't necessarily recommend that you quit immediately. I recommend an exit strategy that, you know, I'm not saying if you're in a situation that is bad, that people are abusing you and that kind of stuff, that's a little bit different. But most people, when they get put under extreme pressure, don't perform as well as, as some people that, that get put under extreme pressure. So an exit strategy is really important to say, I don't want to be here anymore. I want to do what Dinesh did. And like he said, you know, not, not go out. Maybe you don't go out because we, we all have time people say they don't have time and it's a load of crap right because we all have the same amount of time it's what we prioritize so when people say i just don't have time well you you do have time you just made a choice you made a choice to sleep longer you made a choice to go to your kids game not that that's a bad choice you made a choice on what you're going to do with the time that you have because most of us are not actually in jail right and if we're not in jail with someone else dictating where we go and when we go then we just have to adjust the time that we're currently spending and that's where that exit strategy comes in and it might be a quick one it might be a, a you know a long one but having that strategy gives you the stability to at some point, like Dinesh says, if you're ready, just go. Because personally, I would, 
I probably just go, right? Because I know I can make money. I know that I have the skills and the confidence. But if you don't, make sure you have a clear exit strategy. Make sure that, you know, you're ready. And like Dinesh said, give your, you know, some people might steal your idea, right? It's possible. It could happen. But those people are going to somehow get their own in another way, right? Is that we shouldn't be afraid to share what we want to do and how we want to do it with a group of trusted people, you know, of people that can give us good feedback. People like I, I would trust Dinesh. I don't know him that well, but I can tell you the limited time I've spent with him. I trust the man implicitly. If I had a great idea, I, I would absolutely have no hesitation having him uh, implement it for me because I trust his integrity and I trust where he's going. The man is, he's, he's building things. He's not trying to, to, to take his whole life is not about money, 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 you know, building money. Monetization is important. Don't get me wrong. Cause you know, I got to pay my bills. He's got to pay his bills. You have to pay yours, but his whole, it's not about how he can cut a corner and take more money from you. It's about how he can build something better for the community and deliver value. So, you know, keep that in mind as you're you're looking to build a business and I didn't mean to interrupt what you were saying Dinesh but do you agree with kind of the the rounding or it's okay for you to say no I don't agree right right so um in my experience I think it's it's better to share your idea with as many people as you can um okay. not only trusted people um because I don't think anyone is going to steal your idea like in my experience, that just has never happened. And if you live in the fear that people will steal your idea, um, you probably will never start your idea. That's true. You're absolutely right. If because you're afraid... ideas, yeah, ideas are not that important. Execution is important. And people who are able to execute, they are already executing. So they are not looking for your idea. So, right. So I would say never, never be scared that someone will steal your idea. Share it with the world. You will only get to learn more. And the people that are going to steal the ideas that are waiting in the wings, they'll be, a, they, if they were, they'd be a one hit wonder because they don't have the gumption to, they're going to have to go steal ideas from other people. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh my gosh. And people that have one idea have more. It's like, it's not, it's a plethora. It's not like, you know, there's one, that's it. This is it. That's all I got. <laughs> right. Exactly. So failure is inevitable. Like if you're lucky, if you're extremely lucky, like if you bought a lottery ticket and you win, um, something like that. So startups are like that. So your first idea will probably fail. And so will your second idea, but you only need one idea that, that is. so keep <laughs> So don't be scared of failure. Just keep yeah. trying. Yeah, I, I would absolutely agree. And I always say that failure, it's not really failing, right? It's really stepping stones. Because when you, when something happens that doesn't work, then you tweak it, you adjust. And wasn't it, was it Thomas Edison that says, I, I didn't yeah, fail? Yeah, I did not fail a thousand times. I learned how to not do something a thousand times. There you go. Exactly. So it's not failure. I always tell people it's not failing. It's a stepping stone. We all have to learn. I mean, we don't come out of the womb coding. I mean, you may have, I don't know, you could be that anomaly, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't come out of the womb knowing what we know and doing what we do. So, you know, when we first start to walk and crawl, you know, there's some face planning going on, there's stuff going on. So it's not failing. It's, it's just the, the stepping stones we need to get where we want to be. So again, right. You are just, I could talk to you for hours and hours. We have a, a 90 minute, uh, you know, time frame here on Facebook. So we, we definitely have to stay within that. But, um, you know, we have a, a quote of yours to share that you had a favorite quote and we always try and do some graphics there. And yours was a lamp can never light another lamp unless it continues to burn its own flame. And that was from an, an unknown quote. So I mean, that's, that's pretty stellar. And I think that's exactly what you were just saying, right? Share your ideas, you know, contribute, get involved with people that are quality because that is you sharing your flame and, and, and continuing to spread that light. Right. Um, so I think this is from an Indian poet named Rabindranath Tagore. So he, um, I, think I could say that, but okay. So yeah, it's not unknown. I just wanted to um, give credit where to. Sure. Okay. You know what? And we'll change that before it goes out in the cycle. Nikki, I'll have Dinesh send that to you. So I apologize, Dinesh, that we yeah. got that wrong. No, not, not a problem. Just we can fix things. Definitely. And what's his name again? Just so we can um, add a nice. It's, I will have to write it because it is one of those names. Uh, but it's Rabindranath Tagore. Rabindranath Tagore. 
yeah, yeah, kind of. So like a rub, you know, <laughs> rub. It was close. <laughs> <laughs> at least I tried, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. at least yeah. I tried. So, um, you know, so, you know, as we kind of look in those things and we wrap the show up that we always want to give credit where credit is due, certainly. And we always want to honor and value our guests. And you have been a, an amazing guest. Uh, I have a couple of announcements to make, and then I'm going to give you a minute to uh, send, you know, throw out a couple parting words. So really quick, you guys know that I have a podcast on Monday nights called He Said, Red Said, where red is always right. And so we are looking for our new he. Wagner Dos Santos has been uh, filling in as my he. And we are, and the, I think it's next week, all of the he's will be getting your email. We'll be having you guys on the show. Uh, if Wagner would like to be my, while we're, while we're starting through this, a lot of people want Wagner to be the new he, but there are people that still think that they can butt up against you, Wagner. So we're going to be having you guys on in January and uh, we'll be looking at that. It'll be a lot of fun. So if you guys are interested, this is your last chance to get in to be the new he. So go to he said red set.com and click on the link that you're interested in being the new he send in your information and some, some information showing us that you guys can uh, know how to do a podcast or know how to actually entertain an audience. And we will consider you to be on the show because you're kind of competing against Wagner, just so you know. Uh, and that'll give you a great opportunity. We don't have any shows next week. Next week is Christmas and my birthday. My birthday is two days after Christmas. So thank you, Rob. And uh, so I will be celebrating that. I'm turning 22. No, just kidding. <laughs> but uh, I, so we won't have a show uh, next week. But the and then the following uh, the third, I've already been. I know you guys are still going to be trying to get your lives together. So our next show is actually going to be uh, with Mel Austin of Squeaky Clean Comedy. He's a great Christian guy. He does a lot of stuff at uh, schools and that kind of stuff. He's an amazing comedian and a lot of fun. So he'll be doing uh, some be doing some stuff with us and sharing out how what he shares at the schools and how to develop character and how to be uh, an entrepreneur and still keep your keep your mouth clean right and so squeaky clean comedy you guys will definitely have fun watching mel austin and um you know i want to make sure that dinesh now has a couple of minutes before we uh roll out so you know dinesh is there anything else that you there you know, anything else that you want to give to these people so um not really. I, I guess we talked about things. Um, so I would say that um, what I have learned in life is that be likable because it's the power of your network. So the bigger, the more powerful your network is, um, more power you have. So try to connect with people, help them. Don't try to um, just take their help and not give anything in return. Try to help people genuinely, not expecting that they will help you back one day or something. Just um, get out there, talk to more people, build your network, and your network will prove so immensely helpful for you, for your career, for person, uh, you personally, and at, at so many friends. So please um, do that. And uh, I think with that, I should thank you, Vicky. This, this was amazing. Like, I could not have started my day um, a better way. So thank you for, for inviting me over. Oh, it was my pleasure. And I know you had to get up at a very early hour to join us. What time is it there right now? It's right now. It's 10 a.m. So it's not that bad. Okay. So I don't feel quite as bad. I know when we did Vicki Taylor, she had to be up at 2 a.m. She was up at 2 a.m. to be oh. on. <laughs> but you know, your show, your, your, your um, show keeps me awake at night. You know, when I, uh, I had to like make sure that I knew everything I was going to talk about, the, the clothes that I was going to wear. And then usually I don't care about those things, but yeah. <laughs> Your show is something that keeps me awake at night. Well, that that I don't think he meant it that way. The, it, it means it entertains him while he's going to sleep at night, not it keeps him awake. <laughs> you know, that sounded a little bit, you know, like something. Oh, well, uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry if, if it came out the wrong way. I meant that I had to be careful about everything that I do not make a mistake and make your show look bad. Oh, you, you couldn't make it look bad. You're amazing. Again, just the fact that you came here delivering this value. You've got these great apps out there. You, again, you're contributing to the marketplace in a way that is uh, overwhelmingly positive. And we so appreciate you. I appreciate your time here. I really do think that you and I could do some wonderful things together. And I'm totally looking forward to that. that I mean, I, I definitely see us doing some fun stuff. So you guys heard it here first. Dinesh and I, uh, at some point, will be doing something together and it will be stellar. <laughs> no doubt about it. For sure. 
Yes. And so, you know, Dinesh, I want to thank you for coming on. We are going to put up your show card. So you guys, this is how you can reach Dinesh. Uh, his information is here. Make sure that you take a screenshot of that card right there. Tells you his website. You know, there's a couple of go to, and remember, go to vickifitch.com slash recur post. That uh, gives you the link to get into recur post. And that will also make sure you guys click and let us know your information so we can get you the, the data when we're going to do this webinar and uh, that you'll be able to learn about some other great things as, uh, that come out for him. You also, like I said, hopefully you took a screenshot of that. And then I'm going to introduce myself for those of you who don't know me, you know, those of you guys who are on the podcast again, thank you for being here. Thanks for downloading. Uh, I hope that you'll watch episode 25 with Dinesh Agrawal. Uh, watch it on YouTube, Facebook, and VickiFitch.com slash VickiFitchLive. So my name, you guys, is Vicki Fitch. I am a direct sales expert. I've been in the industry 20 years, top 10 sales and recruiting internationally for more than a decade. I've also built and sold four companies. I am an author, a speaker, and an international business consultant helping you get outside the 5,000 to turn your passion into your profits. I do do that free 20-minute consultation at VickiFitch.com slash 20. I'd also love to have you in my entrepreneurial rock stars group. So go to VickiFitch.com dot com slash freebies and of course be smart and go to vickyvitch.com slash recur post r-e-c-u-r-p-o-s-t dot com so you guys can get um wait.com slash recur post p-o-s-t sorry and make sure that you guys download recur post you can start with the free version i'm sure you're going to want to upgrade but you guys are an amazing audience i hope that you will remember that jesus is the reason for the season that we are right now going into christmas i hope you have a fantastic Christmas, an amazing new year. And I look forward to seeing you guys on Wednesday, the 4th with Mr. Mel Austin. So for now, I want to remind you, like I always do, to dream it, believe it, and achieve it. Ciao.